So we are on our way to the vet. Uh, events took a bit of an unexpected turn this morning. Right, so I've just pulled these out. They were coming two together. So I'm just going to give them a swing. It is all go. Oh my gosh. So this is my big Bertha who was massive. And so these two were coming at the same time. I'd got the head of this one, the feet of this one, and I had literally had to put my hand in and push it back inside. But it is amazing how much lambs, they love. You just love being stroked. You love it. Everything seems okay this morning, so I'm going to go and check up the field and find out what's happening up there. What have we got then, Nick? <laughs> what have we got? We've got a, a lamb that's wandered off with another ewe. Standard. So frustratingly, we found a ewe who's had twins and she's rejecting one of them. So that means immediately pick them up in the trailer and take them down to the farm and get you the ewe on a halter ASAP so that both farms can drink. So we have been teaching this lamb to drink because it wasn't very clever and holding the ewe still because she, uh, no, she wasn't allowing it to drink, was she? So it's all fun and games in the morning. <laughs> Come on, under there. They can be quite difficult to uh, persuade to get the head in the right place, but once they get it, it's very satisfying. Lower. Lower. So after all of the excitement this morning, it's all calm again up here now. It's all happening down in the shed. One thing that is for sure is that the good weather that we've been having lately with a little bit of rain has meant that the grass is definitely growing and it's gone so much greener over the last few days it's really really quite noticeable um, and the hawthorn is coming greener every day so it's a really nice time of year the blossoms are starting to come every day it starts to look a little bit more lush and beautiful Go away. so this is the prime example of one you who's lambing wanting to get in there and take another one's lamb before it's her, it's not hers, so I need to come and intervene. One that lost one are now twins and they're going out into the field to make space because it's all happening isn't it Nick? It is. So this is another really good strong looking set of triplets all safely arrived so I'm really pleased about that. So it's 12 o'clock on Monday and we've just lambed this one because she was uh, struggling to get it out and it's quite a big big lamb with quite a big chunky head and there was one leg back so it was quite difficult to to get to birth it uh, but we've done it and uh, she's a good mum it's not first time or anything she seems like she's doing a good job it's a good sized lamb isn't it good, strong single lamb that's it have a good shake so it's 2.45 and um, behind me there is 
a ewe where we've just lambed the first one. Um, I could see that she was having contractions, been, been monitoring her pretty closely. And uh, when Nick and I went over, because I could see she'd been down and pushing quite a bit, all that was hanging out was just the tail, uh, which was a sort of you know yellowy brown colour. So I could tell the lamb was probably in a bit of distress, had his first poo, that's what the colour is. Um, so went back in, pulled the back legs forward and out it came backwards and we had to swing it into life quite a bit a few times just by the back legs, clears the airways um, and gets it going and it's fine. Right, so I've just pulled these out, they were coming two together so I'm just going to give them a swing, clear the airways and make sure they're going. So this is my big Bertha who was massive um, and so these two were coming at the same time. I'd got the head of this one, the feet of this one and I had literally had to put my hand in and push it back inside and then find the right leg for here, pull it out. As you can see they're all pretty big size, in fact this is the smallest, the one that came first so hopefully they're okay. Um, I'm absolutely delighted with this one. Um, that uh, that could have been really problematic uh, if she'd not had any help. So I'm just glad, you know, that's why we're here. That's why we're monitoring them. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what anyone ever said about mules being uh, self-sufficient and not needing help with lambing. I've been very, very hands-on with lambing this season. Um, you know, more than I've ever lambed and more than I've ever even known my dad used to lamb. So, um, getting my getting my uh all my different experiences ticked off so yeah this one she's lambed them up in the penthouse we're gonna say because the views up here are the best lambs num <laughs> lambs number 12 and 13 of the day today and it is four o'clock so another good day of lambing i've got my mom helping me this afternoon doing a bit of everything as we all have to do so it's monday afternoon and we are just taking in the view and all of the sheep and lambs looking great some of them are jumping in the air it's a really nice uh, feeling to have this lovely weather and see the result of all of our efforts of the last few months with lots of happy little lambs laying and skipping and playing and enjoying life in the fields. Would you agree? <laughs> of course I'd agree. <laughs> These are our second successful adoption. Um, so uh, this ewe had a single, so we put a triplet lamb onto her and she spent a couple of days in the adopter and now she's accepted it. So they're going out in the field today. So we are on our way to the vet. Uh, events took a bit of an unexpected turn this morning. Um, we've got a ewe where we've uh, felt inside and it just doesn't feel like there's any way the lambs are going to be able to come out of there. Yet it appears that she is lambing um, and so I don't have the, the knowledge um, to know what you do in this situation other than to get a vet involved. Um, so hopefully the vet will be able to help and best case scenario is we'll get the lambs out alive. We've got three live babies. So I'm a bit flushed. I think it's from the stress and the fact the sun's out. What happened then, Nick? We got them all out. We're very happy because they're all alive. And so uh, in my mind, we did the right thing because um, we, wouldn't have got we, didn't, out, would we? we didn't wait and we, uh, we, um, yeah, we didn't wait and hang around. We just kind of made a very fast decision that we didn't know how we were going to get them out. And he said that, yes, it was ring womb, which, um, yeah, makes it very difficult. And he just basically explained to me that there's various different bands 
um, inside and you have to almost like find each band and stretch it and I, I'd kind of stretched the, the very front bit but I hadn't really stretched the inside um, and he also had something called a snare which he used which I would obviously he recommended that I get one and then practice using it um, because it, it did look pretty pretty difficult to, to bring them out yeah. and the sheep was really like crying out in pain and I'm, I'm not sure that I would have had the confidence to do it so um, so I'm happy to have handed it over to somebody else to be quite honest yeah. uh, so they were big lambs but they're all breathing so it's like whew, happy <laughs> Uh, so it might help to go backwards a little bit. The story behind these is that this morning I uh, went up to feed. There were two sets of triplets born. Um, so the focus was kind of on them. Nothing looked imminent. Um, we went round and then we came back and did some second checks. And uh, I noticed that this ewe was fussing around the other sheep's lambs. So that was a sign for me that she was feeling hormonal. And so she could be lambing soon. And then when I saw her back end, there was just a, the some evidence of some fluid hanging out of the vagina and um so i was like okay so she's she is actually lambing but she's not really acting like it that much so i was watching her closely and we sat and um had our breakfast up in the field and watched her and she really was presenting for me what i believe to be the signs of ring wound which is where they don't progress very much with the uh lip delivery and labor so we caught her in the field after breakfast and I, and I saw that there was more liquid coming out. When I put my hand in to feel, it was tight and there was the meconium stuff on my hand, which made me think the lambs are stressed and they're ready to come out. So we brought her in and I couldn't deliver the lambs. Um, it just felt very, very tight inside. And and I, I think I just thought this is too much for me. It's beyond me and time is critical. So we whizzed it down to the vet and the vet delivered them um, using the noose um and they're you know they're quite stressed but hopefully they're going to be okay with a bit of care i'm not sure about about that one but we'll do the best we can so i went down to the farm <laughs> i got changed into some clean clothes came to check on this ewe to see how she was progressing and i could see that she was not being very good with her pushing so i saw the head was out grabbed the ewe there was a leg back and so i've just lambed these two so that makes uh, it now lamb number nine, 10 and 11 of today and lamb number 108 and 109. amazing how much lambs they love you just love being stroked you love it you love it you love it don't you baby don't you baby yes you do <laughs> So these are the special well care done. babies for the next few days and I will keep you updated as to how things progress. That is the end of this video so thank you so much for watching and I will bring you more lambing updates soon. Bye!